Nyombi was two months shy of making four years in cabinet on Sunday when he was removed. He weathered many legal storms, with critics saying he has perhaps presided over the most difficult terrain. Clause 2 of Article 142 provides that a judge of the Supreme Court, even after he has clocked 70 years, may be appointed by the president. That was July 2013. As Nyombi explained his controversial position on the reappointment of Chief Justice Benjamin Odoki. But the Constitutional Court later ruled that Odoki did not qualify for reappointment. The Uganda Law Society voted to give Nyombi a certificate of incompetence, saying he had consistently misadvised the president on the law and also gave legal opinions inconsistent with the Constitution. As the entire legal fraternity, when we sat in that meeting, we came to a conclusion that he had actually misadvised the president. No attorney general in the world I know of has ever been condemned so much, almost universally, by his legal fraternity. Former Supreme Court Judge Justice George Kanyehamba, who served as Attorney General in President Yoweri Museveni's first cabinet, says Nyombi's reign left a lot to be desired. Nyombi also got embroiled in the 22 trillion shilling standard gauge railway saga, where China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation suddenly lost the contract to China Harbor Engineering Company. Outgoing State Minister of Works John Biabagambi reportedly ignored Nyombi's advice against cancelling a memorandum of understanding with Czech, saying it was not binding. Nyombi also fell out with other government institutions like Parliament, the Inspectorate of Government, and lately the Directorate of Public Prosecutions. It is usually very, very, very unusual to see a statement made in the press that the DPP disagreed with the Attorney General, or the Attorney General disagreed with the Solicitor General. The Attorney General is mandated to represent these government institutions, but the IGG and Parliament now want an amendment to have their own lawyers, arguing that the Attorney General's chambers had not served them well. We are all prone to dispute as leaders, but then how we come out of those is, is very critical, and I think that is where he failed as a, as a former Attorney General. In the multi-billion dollar Mukono Cheto Mekatosi Nyenga Road project, Itao illegally subcontracted a Chinese company, SICO, and Inspector General of Government, Justice Irene Mulia Gonja, said SICO be blacklisted for fraud. Fred Ruhindi, then Nyombi's deputy, advised that SICO should lose the contract. But Nyombi insisted that SICO was innocent. But it was not doom. Nyombi got a feather in his cape when the Attorney General's chambers saved the country at least 400 millions of dollars in the heritage oil case filed against government in London. New Attorney General Fred Ruhindi and his deputy, accomplished lawyer Mwesi Gwarukutana, have their work cut out with a number of pending cases in court and the nearly two-year-old Chief Justice vacancy. We've had many flawed um, uh, opinions from Honorable Peter Nyambi, so I think uh, Honorable Fred Ruhindi has the honors now to, to clean that up. Shilandhuchiri, NTV.